Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. In this video I will show you how you can improve the accuracy of your polar alignment by using the software PHD2. If you haven't already installed PHD2, there is a link to it in the description. Once you open PHD2, this first light wizard will show up. You now have to follow the instructions and select your guiding camera and your mount. You can also choose a name for your equipment profile. The next step is to connect your equipment to PHD2. It is not dark outside right now, so I will run a simulation. You now need to click on this USB cable in the bottom left corner and once your equipment is connected to your PC, hit connect all. Now these two arrows that spin in a circle became green. So if you click on that, you now see the live images your camera is taking. You can now either select the star manually or click on auto select star down here. The next step is to click on begin guiding. This will start a calibration which takes a few moments. Alright, I'm back after this shortcut. The calibration is now finished and PHD2 is currently guiding. We can now start with the actual topic of the video, the drift alignment. For that you go on tools and then drift align. Now this little window opens and you have to slew your mount near the meridian and the equator. For controlling my mount I use Stellarium and if I go into sky and viewing options I can select the equator and the meridian and can now slew the mount near the position where they meet. If you do this make sure that you select the star that has already passed the meridian because otherwise you would have to do a meridian flip whilst aligning. You start the drift alignment by selecting a star and then clicking drift. You should be able to see a red and a blue line at the bottom. For us only the red trend line declination line is important. You will now have to wait until the trend line is more or less stable and it no longer changes directions quickly. Alright, once the trend line is stabilized you can hit adjust. You now have to manually adjust the azimuth screws of your mount. If you are doing this the first time, you will have to guess in which direction you need to adjust your mount. But once you figured that out, you can write a note in PHD. For example, trend line down, then an arrow, adjust to the right. However, you have to remember the rotation of your camera, because if it is rotated different the next time you want to align your mount, these notes will be useless. If your mount already is aligned pretty well, will see this purple circle. Whilst adjusting you want to move the star from the middle of the circle to the ring of the circle. However, in my experience this is too far most of the time, so I try to move the star about half the way there. Once you are done with that, you again hit drift. As I am running a simulation right now, I can't adjust any screws, so that's why the polar alignment error isn't getting any smaller. In the night however, it does get smaller. And you now have to repeat adjusting and drifting until the red trend line is approximately in the middle somewhere around here. We are now finished with the azimuth alignment and you hit altitude in this drift align window. You will now once again have to slew your mount to a certain position. For that I also use Stellarium and slew the mount towards the equator at the eastern or western horizon. Which horizon you use is totally up to you and is obviously dependent on your surroundings. You will now have to repeat the same process as you have done it earlier. Click drift, wait for the declination line to stabilize, click adjust, guess the direction you have to adjust your mount to, in this case obviously the altitude screws, and then repeat drifting and adjusting until the red trend line is somewhere in the middle. All right. Now that the alignment is finished, you can close the drift align window and go to tools and click on guiding assistant. After letting it run for at least two minutes, this tool will tell you the polar alignment error of your mount at the bottom of this table. If you do have a guiding camera, everything below 10 arc minutes is fine. However, if you don't have one, you should aim towards an error below two arc minutes. Obviously, even smaller is better but these are just such little adjustments that you will have to make, which makes it extremely difficult to achieve a polar alignment error below one arc minute. 
If your error is too big, you should go back to the drift alignment tool and repeat this whole process. I hope I could help you out with this tutorial. If you learned something in this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps me out a lot. Clear skies.